Hi there, Shutterbugs. Today we'll be going over the Rico WG80, the waterproof, shockproof, crushproof, freezeproof camera. Let's get started. The Rico WG80 is a point and shoot, waterproof, crush proof, freeze proof, and shock proof camera with a 16 megapixel half inch sensor, has nine focus points, and has a five times optical zoom. It features a great macro focus as close as one centimeter, shoots HD video up to 30 frames, and weighs less than half a pound. Today we'll go over the buttons, doors, and menus of this camera and its features. So going into our first Rico camera here, this is a point and shoot camera. It's designed to be waterproof, crush proof, all that stuff that you heard me say in the beginning. But I find that this, this one's closest competitor is the Olympus TG6, which I did go over a walkthrough of a couple years ago. So I was interested, interested to see how this competed and with it being at a lower price point than the Olympus. I will say that, as you can see in the sample footage, this does not excel at all in low light. It's, it is not made for that. Now, if you're traveling or, you know, and you're primarily taking pictures out in the middle of the day, you can see that the photos actually come out very well. The colors come out pretty fantastic. It's very sharp. There's still a lot of good quality there. Um, especially when you're utilizing the macro mode. The macro mode is very, very close quality to the TG6. And I've always said the TG6 has the best macro ability out of any point and shoot, like by far blows it out of the water. And the Ricoh actually comes very close to that. So it's a, if you're looking for something for macro photography specifically, and just looking for an easy point and shoot to use and you don't want to spend as much as the Olympus TG6, the Rico would be a great option for that. Um, as far as I know, it comes just in orange and then completely in black, which I like to say that it looks like Batman's personal camera. It looks like the Batmobile of cameras. It's very tactical looking, very rough and rugged. Um, it definitely has a very nice look. But one thing that out of the box I thought was the coolest thing ever, which it's funny because I had just received a, uh, not a negative review toward me, but a negative review toward the Olympus TG6 is somebody said, why the heck doesn't it come with a lens cap option? And in my mind, I'm like, well, I think of all the other underwater cameras that are designed to be underwater cameras, like this one here, none of them that I could think of come with a lens cap because naturally if you're going underwater with it, what's the point of having a lens cap on it? You know, and more, most of the time I imagine it would get lost. But in opening the box for this, I was shocked to see that it comes with this cool ring here. And this ring just clicks right into these notches that are in the top and bottom here. And it just, click right in. And as you can see, I already screwed a filter on this, which if you go out and you find a lens cap, that's 46 millimeters. This one happens to say Sigma on it. You have a lens cap for this camera, which I just thought was the coolest thing ever. So you have a way to protect the glass on this. Um, you can also add circular polarizers and ND filters, all because of this ring that comes with the camera in the box. So for those that are also upset by the fact that the TG6 does not have a way to add a lens cap, the Rico has solved that for you. Like that is pretty darn incredible. I gotta say so myself. Now the front of the camera here, the overall this camera is very, very simple. So there's not a lot that will really have to go over, just kind of your basic overlay of what everything does. 
Right around the lens here, we do have LED lights. This is going to help you immensely with your macro photography, especially when you're getting to that one centimeter range, uh, which we'll go over here in a little bit. We have uh, your flash here on the front, so you wanna make sure that you do not cover that with your finger on accident when you're taking pictures. But other than that, I believe, I believe this is your microphone, if I'm not mistaken, when it comes to taking video, if you'd like to do that, or I'm sorry, it looks like this is probably the microphone, this may be the speaker or vice versa. Um, but that's where your audio is going to come from. If we go to the side of the camera here, this side of the camera doesn't have any fancy doors or anything, but it does have a wide bracket for a wide range of straps that you can put on there. There's not just this little itty bitty hole that you would see on some of these other cameras where you have to use this, you know, thread of a, of a wrist strap. Um, so you can actually put a wide variety of straps on the side of this camera that are a little bit thicker and durable, uh, which I actually really like. On the other side of this camera here, you can see we do have one little door and on the outside it does say HDMI and USB. Now you can see there's a little switch here. So the way this goes is you see there's a little arrow and it points this way, so you want to switch this switch at the same time as sliding this out and then you can lift that up and there you go you have your HDMI port to plug into a screen or a television or something like that show a slideshow of your most recent underwater venture or you have a USB port here for transferring images to your computer directly from the camera to the computer. Although I would recommend just getting a SD card reader, but that's a personal preference of mine. And then to close this up, you push it down and push it right back in. And as long as this switches over and this is not coming out, this is sealed. Now I wanna stress that because this is an underwater camera. It doesn't mean that if one of these doors is cracked open, so it's like this and you go underwater because you can see here that there's a little yellow in there indicating that, hey, this isn't closed. Uh, the inside of this is not waterproof, so it will destroy the camera. So you always wanna make sure before you bring this in the water that all of the doors are closed properly so no water gets into the camera itself. It will not be properly sealed. Now, if we go to the bottom of the camera here, you can see that we have another door. We also have a tripod mount here. So this is where you would mount your tripod or if you wanted to use like a selfie stick or something like that, you could do that. And to open this door here, we're gonna do the same thing that we did here. We're going to pull up on the switch and pull out on the door and that will now flip up. Now we have access to the chargeable battery, which you just hit this little yellow tab and it springs right up there and you can take that in and out. Um, and then you do have access to the SD card port as well. Now this doesn't have any little signage of how to put the SD card in. So if it doesn't go in one way, don't force it. Just Turn it around, try it the other way. And then to close it, you just make sure that you're pushing down here and you slide it over. As long as that switch isn't showing yellow, then you're all good to go. That is ready to go into the water. On the top of the camera here, we just have two very simple buttons. We have the power button, which will light up green when the camera is powered on. And we have your shutter button which you just push halfway down to focus. As you can see, that little orange light shined out, that's the autofocus assist, which if there's an area that is lacking detail or lacking light, it'll shine that out to help the autofocus lock on. So you push halfway down to focus, all the way down to take a picture. Pretty simple. Now the fun part. If we go to the back of the camera, up here, you can see that we have the buttons W and T. This is gonna be for your zoom range. So if I just lift this up here, say I use one of my GoPro batteries just as a subject here, 
You can do telephoto, which is zooming in, and you can do W for wide, which is zooming out. Now to focus, no matter what zooming range you're at, you always need to push your button halfway down to focus in. You'll get that little green square there to show that it is indeed in focus. To look at your pictures that you've already taken, you just press this playback button here, which at the moment shows no image, so uh, nothing to look at there. But if we did have a picture and you wanted to delete it, you have a little trash can down here with the green button. You would just hit that and hit delete if you would like to delete it off your card. Also your universal escape button if you get stuck in the menu or your playback and you wanna get back to taking pictures, you just hit your shutter button halfway down. You get right back to that. Um, before I go any further, it does say on the back of the screen here that it is waterproof up to 45 feet, crush proof up to 220 pounds, freeze proof up to 14 degrees, and shock proof up to 5.2 feet. So that's the specs for it right there, um, which is really cool and you can just look at that whenever you need to. Now, if we look at our shortcut buttons here, if we push up, this is going to be our drive mode. So you have the single square, which is going to be one picture at a time. You have your drive mode self timer. So if you want to set a timer, you could do that. You have your continuous shooting, which I'm not sure what the specs are on how fast that is. I imagine that it's probably not faster than three or four frames per second. But what that does is it allows you to click and hold that shutter button down and it continually take pictures as long as you hold that button. And you have the remote control, which um, you can do a wireless remote for this that is sold separately. And then you have auto bracketing as well. Now this is all going to be in your P mode and we'll go over what that is here in a moment. But there is an all automatic mode where these would not work for you. So if you want all of your options to be available, uh, you want to shoot in P mode. Now, if you hit the button to the left, this is going to be your flash mode. You have automatic flash, no flash, you can turn the flash on to flash no matter what, and you have some red eye options as well. Let's see it. Now, if you push on the, I'm sorry, this was the left button, this is the right button. <laughs> I'm doing this upside down here. So you can have just regular autofocus, which if we take a picture of this battery, you can see just how small, you see just how small the writing is on this battery. So we're, this is actually gonna be a perfect example. So if we go here and we go to our macro mode, right? And what I'm gonna do is actually on this flash mode, you also have the macro light, which is these LEDs here. That's how you turn those on. So by putting it on, let's just see how close we can get with our regular shooting mode here. So let's see here. No, it doesn't like that. Doesn't like that. Okay, that's the closest that we can get with our regular shooting mode. Now, if we hit it into macro mode, let's see how close we can get here. So it only lets us get a little bit closer, allows us to get about that close. Now, if we go to macro one centimeter, that will allow us to practically get on top of this battery and get this QR code if I really wanted to. So it allows us to get pretty darn close. Now, before I go over the rest of these, just to jump into our mode option real quick, there is a microscope mode. So here is your macro mode of the one centimeter and then you add your zoom in. And it focuses right in there. And you can just, you can see the bleeding of the ink on this battery when it was printed. Like it's, it's detailed. It's, it's pretty incredible. So we have, let's see, no macro, macro, one centimeter, microscope. That is pretty darn cool. 
Like the mac, like I said, the macro ability of this camera is pretty top notch. So now, if I would like to delete all these, I can use the trash can here. So I'm gonna delete. We're going to delete. And yes, you do have to delete one by one. And delete. Perfect, no more images. So now let's go ahead and get back to our shooting mode here and our focusing modes. So we'll go back to P. So focusing. So you also have pan focus available for trying to uh, like capture things moving by. You have infinity focus. This is great for um, stars. This is great for just capturing things very far away. Mountainscapes, as this does only have a five times optical zoom. And you do have manual focus here as well. For now, we'll go ahead and keep it in autofocus for just all of your general picture taking. Now you have your mode dial here. Let's go ahead and turn off the macro light, <laughs> right? So your mode dial has all of these shooting modes for you. So when you take it out of the box, it'll probably be in automatic, auto picture. This is not going to give you access to these settings here. It's going to allow the camera to be in full automatic mode and that's it, which is good enough for some people. But if you like macro or you wanna try these other modes, you totally can. P gives you the most freedom with choosing certain settings that you would like to have. You have HDR, handheld night snap, you have movie mode, high speed movie. Now you can do a video just by hitting this red button here if you're in your auto or your P mode. So do keep that in mind. The red button here is just press to start recording, press to stop recording. But the movie modes itself allows you to have more general actual settings for your video. You have your microscope mode, landscape, flowers, portraits, underwater, underwater movie, interval shots, interval movie, surf and snow, kids, pets, sports, night scene, night scene portrait, fireworks, food, digital SR. Uh, you have a report for documents. So if you were taking using this for work, it's great for that. Now I will say I did test out the night handheld shot and uh, what was the one down here, like night scene. And I did find that I was happier with my pictures in P mode because I was able to have more control than the night modes. It just, the clarity wasn't the same. And I'm not, you know, I, I couldn't tell you why. It just, in my personal opinion, it wasn't. So the scene modes for me have always been debatable. In this specific camera, if you're playing around during the day and you wanna try different things, go for it, but I would not depend on those. Use your auto or your P mode in this camera is what I would recommend, or that microscope mode if you wanna get really close to something. Um, we've gone over the trash can, we've gone over the record button. Now the final thing to do is going through the menu. So, if we're starting up at the top here, our first one here is our record mode. And you have one of four pages displaying here. So you have your image tone, which you can do bright, natural, vibrant. I picked bright, you know, that seemed to fit the best. Uh, you can pick natural as well, just kind of gives a general tone to the photo. You have a recording pixels, so you can actually choose less pixels, but I would really recommend sticking with the full 16. Quality level, always go with the three stars. White balance, I recommend keeping this camera on auto white balance. This controls the temperature of the photo, and cameras these days, even these point and shoots, are pretty good at determining what the temperature should be. Uh, you, we have autofocus settings, so if you would like it more wide um, or if you'd like it more specific where it's more center, you could do that. You have your metering where it's taking the light from, same thing where it could focus on taking light from the entire setting versus just the center or a portion of it. <clears throat> and again, these are only accessible in P mode, auto won't show all these. 
Um, you have your sensitivity to light, your ISO. Um, auto is really good, but you can also set a range. So I actually set the range on this from 125 to 1600. And even that's a little high for this sensor, um, but it's better than it going to 6400 you know, uh, in my opinion. Then you have um, exposure value compensation, uh, which you can make a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, depending on your situation, because naturally your camera is built to recognize the middle tone gray rather than a solid black or solid white. So you can actually correct that using this by making the scene a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. Uh, we have your dynamic range settings, pixel tracking if you want to track, face detection, that's always nice. Blink detection will let you know someone blinked. Digital zoom, I recommend turning the digital zoom off, especially on a sensor this size where the optical zoom is going to get you the best information. The digital zoom is only gonna crop in on that information. You get less and less clarity the more that digital zoom goes. So I recommend just turning off the digital zoom. You have your instant review, which will instantly show you your picture after you've taken it. Um, your memory settings. You can program the green button here in your shooting mode because naturally we know when we're looking at pictures in the playback mode, you use the green button with the trash can. It does delete the photos, but what does it do when you're taking pictures? You can actually program that to do what you would like, which is kind of neat. Uh, the sharpness on your screen. You can also do saturation and contrast. Date date imprint, so you can have it imprint the date on your photos. IQ enhancer, and you have your macro light as well. So you have all those settings there. The next one here is going to be your movie menu. So naturally, if you're not in your movie menu, you really just get these three options. You get how many pixels you would like to record in, uh, which I decided to choose a higher megapixel um, when it came to the video. You have movie SR, you also have wind suppression. So I made sure to check all those just in case. You should be getting more of these details very similar to what you were seeing here uh, when you're actually on a movie mode um, if you want to get more specific. Otherwise, if you're just taking a quick clip, uh, then you can just hit the red button when you're in a P mode or auto mode, no specifics necessary. And then we have just your general settings here. So we have sound, which you can turn on and off your sound for playback or operation if you would like it to beep, that type of thing. We have data, uh, data adjustment if you need to adjust the date, maybe it's wrong. Uh, and then you can input the date, the proper date on it. You can set an alarm. You can set it for world time. You can set the text size in case it's very difficult to see it on the back of this screen, which I know some of you have asked for on other cameras, which is nice to see here. Your language. Uh, we have your folder name, file name, USB connection, uh, the HDMI. We have your brightness level of your screen, outdoor viewing uh, to adjust it for um, maybe on a brighter day because it's always tricky to see these screens when it comes to seeing it outdoors. Power saving, so right now it's set to five seconds of it doing nothing. It'll turn off the screen to save some power. Auto power off after three minutes. Quick zoom which I turned off because I'd rather have something gradual. Uh, we have your guide display, resetting your settings. So maybe you're playing with your settings here and you did something funky and you don't know what you did. You can go in here and reset your settings, delete all of your pictures, which you can do that. We have pixel mapping. We have standard shortcut and formatting. Formatting is something I go through on every camera. Now, formatting and deleting all may seem like it's the same thing because formatting does delete all of the image on, images on your card. But the difference is, is when you go delete all, what that's doing is it's 
deleting the visible file, but still has some of that background data inside the card itself, allowing it to be overwritten. When you overwrite that data over and over and over again without ever formatting your card, then that can actually cause corruption. It can lock you out of your pictures or you just lose your pictures that you just took on your amazing trip. Now, formatting your card can actually keep your card nice and healthy. What this does is it not just deletes the files on the card, it deletes all the data too. It resets it to a brand new card for you and reintroduces it to the camera itself and allows it to be ready to shoot. So formatting your card, I recommend doing this, you know, every so often. It doesn't have to be after every single time you back up your card to your computer, which by the way, you want to do before you format your card. Make sure you, you have your pictures backed up because remember formatting, the pictures are gone. You're not getting them back, but it does help your card survive a lot longer. Now, there is one more thing that I want to say in regards to using the record button. One thing that I found that I was a little frustrated with. So if I had zoomed out and taken a picture and then wanted to take a video and zoom back, for some strange reason on this camera, if you're zoomed out and you start recording, it'll allow you to zoom out further, but it won't allow you to zoom farther back than when you started. So it's a little interesting. I'm not sure why it's set to do that, but that is something that I found with this camera. So just an upfront warning, make sure that it's set all the way back to wide before you record. I don't know if this is the case if you switch it into a movie mode first, but I always just use the red button to get a quick clip. So other than that, again, like I said, this is a very simple camera very easy to use. It's great if you have maybe um, a preteen or a teenager that's like, hey, I just want a camera to kick around. Heck, we've sold these to seven and eight year olds because like I said, they're shockproof, they're waterproof, they're crush proof. This is a great camera for them to start playing around with and it's super easy to use or it could be for somebody that just loves macro or just wants to take pictures during the day on a trip. Like, and it's affordable, which you gotta love. So while the low light photos aren't fantastic in this, I will say that the daytime photo and macro photos are pretty incredible. This, especially for the price that you are paying. If you guys have any questions about this camera moving forward, please leave me a comment below. Or if you'd like us, me to go over a different camera or a comparison, I'd be happy to do that. Also check out the description below uh, to, if you would like to support the channel and keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.